actually Kevin Roach here, and uh, Kevin Roach is is, uh, is um, the winner of our selection process for architects. But he had already won before. Be but we thought we couldn't afford to build a Kevin Roach building. That was really the issue. Is when I went to Europe and I saw one of his buildings went in to a customer, I said, you know, this place not only is modern, but it's great to work in. And of course, Kevin's built buildings in Japan, he's built buildings in New York and all that. He's probably the most uh, <coughs> renowned architect today. And the real challenge with Kevin was not whether he could build a campus. Of course, he could build a campus is could he build a campus that we could afford? So the great thing was when we found out that actually we could afford uh, Kevin Roach building and design. So anyway, so well, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody can. <laughs> Thank you, please. <laughs> we have uh, the presentation is on slides and we can just get started. I'm sure you're all familiar with the site. It's about a half a mile to the east of our present location on Route 17. And this is a recently taken photograph, and here is Route 17 cutting through the center of the slide. And we have the site is to the south of that, southeast of that, and it's this area. And it's bordered on the east by the Polo Ranch, on the south by a fairly heavy residential district. And then the axis would be both from the west and an axis off Route 17. The site is 32 and a half acres approximately, and again on this diagram we see 17. We see a point of access from 17 here, and a point of access from uh, the Granite Creek Road in at this point and coming in here. This is a storage locker, a Baptist church, small housing, group of houses, Navarra Drive, which is the entrance into an, another group of houses, and the Borland Farms is uh, off the screen to our right. If I was standing here looking in this direction and looking in that direction, those are the next two slides that you will see. As you can see, the site itself is uh, uh, relatively flat. It is uh, surrounded by very, very heavily planted uh, redwood trees. This is the easterly view, and looking towards the west, you get a similar view. It was site was used as a parking lot, as an RV park, and these uh, trees mark the edge of the site to the west and to the south. Uh, although it looks flat, in fact, uh, these are five-foot contours, so there is a drop of about 25 feet across the site in this direction and also across through here. The subsurface uh, soil conditions show us that we have in uh, marked in dark green here we have bedrock, which means this is the area that we can build. The area marked in the light of green is soft soils subject to liquefaction, and there is a creek along at this point. So this area we cannot build on. We must uh, get the headquarters up in this direction. We've done a number of different schemes for the headquarters, and some of the earlier ones we were locating it in this central uh, position, but uh, in the final scheme which we're now proposing, the, the buildings will be located entirely on bedrock. There is a setback requirement of 20 feet, which is very modest uh, for a site of this uh, size and nature. The intention is to, perhaps we could get the focus a little bit better. The intention is to build the headquarters in two phases. The first phase would have a total gross area of 465,000 square feet. That would house a population of 1,628 people, and then we would have related parking for that on the basis of three cars per 1,000 square feet of uh, net area, we would have parking for 1,055 cars. Now we can see the program shown to scale. Here is the program for the offices, here is the parking, all at the same scale. Uh, the, the program is, breaks down, of course, into the R&D offices. In the first phase, we'll have 343 R&D offices, then we have the other offices. These are a, a 12 by 14 office. These are a 10 by 12 office. Then we have workstations, three sizes of workstations. We have the office support, which are the conference rooms, reproduction areas, and so on. We have the central support, which would be the health center, the cafeteria, the auditorium. And then we have circulation, toilets, and mechanical. That makes up the office program. This is the parking. And in the second stage, 
we would complete the building by adding on in this lighter tone so that we would have a total of 695,000 square feet. Uh, in the total gross area, we have a population of 2,519 people and total parking of, of 1,606 cars. And in the lighter shaded areas, you would see what the proposed addition is for the second phase. Now, of course, the, in designing a building such as this, the primary consideration of both Philippe and, and uh, what we were concerned with is how to deal with the R&D offices, because those are the heart of the whole organization. And we made many studies of different sized uh, R&D offices, and we concluded that uh, a 10 by 14, which is two feet longer than the present and the normal industry standard for these offices, would give the would have the advantage that we would have additional wraparound shelf space so that you could get four or five terminals or even six terminals on the desk, that we would have windows on both sides, that we would be able to get privacy with blinds, that we would get some kind of a wire management or wire organizer or communications organizer in the room, that there would be a wall, a uh, clear wall, which could be used for pinup or additional furniture, bookshelves, that sort of thing. So this was the uh, office configuration size that we have uh, ended up with. And then the next aspect of that was how we allowed this person to communicate with the people in the other offices. And there was an experiment or is an experiment going on in developing, if, if these are, let's say, a group of offices, uh, developing an interaction space between those offices. And we looked at many, many different uh, combinations of uh, groupings of, say, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine uh, offices put together with an interaction space. And we went again through many studies uh, to put those together. For instance, here you have a grouping of uh, offices around an interaction space, another grouping around an interaction space, vertical circulation, the continuous horizontal circulation. And we're proposing to put these offices on the third floor. We are allowed by the local zoning to build three levels of office. So we would propose to put the R&D offices on the top level. And then the rectangle, or the square shown underneath that, is two levels of the support offices that we need to support this number of R&D offices. And then we multiply this by, by two and we have an arrangement which ultimately ends up with 54 R&D offices and about 48 to 50,000 square feet of support space on the two levels below. This was, uh, again, in the progression of things, this was an earlier study where we were wrapping the offices in this manner so that you could have a group, let's say, like that, working together around a communications or interaction space, a smaller group here, and so on. And as we uh, developed the plan, we realized that, of course, these offices looking out across a little uh, small roof terrace, and that it would be nice if they could look out at the view. And so we finally ended up with this plan, which shows the 54 offices around the perimeter set back from the main bulk of the building down below by about 10 feet or so, double loaded corridor. We have four interaction spaces so that the size of the groupings around that interaction space can vary according to the various programs going on. There would be a central courtyard. There are two light wells going down to the space below. These are the support offices and then toilets and circulation. And so this becomes a, a diagram for the module or the basic element of the headquarters design. And that diagram is 180 by 130 feet. And the next thing we have to consider is the problem of parking. In our initial studies, we had uh, thought that we could put parking entirely underground, but uh, that has, uh, goes back to the introduction that Philippe made. We discovered that we could not afford to put parking underground because we are building on rock. It's an expensive excavation. And so we have to uh, develop a system to get as many cars as we can under the building and the remainder go out on the site. So in order to build put cars efficiently under the building, then you have to relate the structure of the building to the parking elements below. And what we're seeing here is two rows of parked cars, car, car in the central aisle, car, car in the central aisle. And this comes out to be about 130 feet. And when you overlay a building on it, 
Here is the 180 by 130 building that we've been talking about. We see that we can get columns every 20 feet in that direction, every 30 feet in this direction. And that is a column spacing which is very efficient both in terms of economics and in terms of the earthquake resistance which we have to deal with in this particular area without getting into extravagant uh, moment connections or cross bracing. So taking that uh, diagram then and putting the building on it, here is a 10 foot module uh, overlaid on the structural module, overlaid on the parking in turn, and then finally the top floor overlaid on that where we have the setback and the uh, arrangement of the R&D offices that we've just discussed. And this is, shows the little central courtyard in each one of these spaces. Now taking this uh, group of buildings, and we need for the first stage, we need approximately six of these and putting them down on the site and putting them on the area where we can build, which is the bedrock, we of course see that there is a sort of a horizontal axis to the site. And there is a wonderful view in this uh, direction. Uh, this is a logical point of entry because we're coming off the freeway here. If we come on at this point, we can come around and also enter in here. But if we arrange the buildings in this way uh, around the central axis with the idea that they're looking at the view, in fact, they're not. They're looking across at each other and they're looking across in this direction so that by tilting these in this manner, we can get more of a, a, an observance of the view of the axis. And we also achieve something else which is of concern to the buildings is the proximity of these buildings to the highway. It's of course the problem of noise as we have in this building here. By tilting it at this angle, you limit the exposure of the building to a relatively smaller cone than you would if the building were running parallel as it does here to the highway. Now, we, ha we are building in an area where, uh, as I, guess, I guess almost anywhere you build these days, where you are, the neighborhood is very sensitive to the fact that you're going to build next to them. So we have all of this housing in through here, and we have to concern ourselves with what is the impact of this building on the housing, the neighborhood. And of course, the first problem that you have to deal with is this little group of houses here and the proximity that this building would have uh, to the nearest house. And we're probably going to face that tonight because we're meeting the neighbors. But we did move the whole building as far as east as we could so that we weren't um, overlapping the bedrock area and getting into this uh, soft soil. That gets us 180 feet away from the nearest neighbor. And we think that that's a reasonable distance. We think that we will be, we hope that we will be persuasive to that particular neighbor that that's uh, far enough away. So that becomes then the diagram for the first stage of the building. Points of entry, vehicular entry are here and coming in here and coming in this way also from Granite Creek Drive. We put in the roads. You can see arrival here, arrival here. You come to the front door, which is at this point, and the uh, service entry would be here, coming into the loading docks, which we located that uh, point for a number of reasons which I will which will be evident as we go through the plans then we put in the parking we have as I said at the outset we have approximately 1050 cars in the first stage a third of those will go under the building will fit underneath the building with relatively little additional cost to the structure we, we raise the building up a half level we can depress when we scrape off the top surface we can depress the uh, ground under the building a half level and so we get naturally, venti naturally ventilated parking under the building as I said with relatively little cost. The remainder of the parking has to go on the outside and of course would be uh, heavily landscaped. Now dealing with the rest of the site and developing this element which Philippe was particularly interested in is to have a wonderful water feature running through the site and as we study that we thought that a circle would be a very interesting element to have here as a sort of focus for this building, as a focus for the entry. And then as uh, we looked at this, we hit upon what I think is a very happy coincidence that the size of this circle is exactly the same size and exactly the same orientation as Stonehenge. And just to show you what that means, here is Stonehenge overlaid <laughs> on the thing. Here is the outer mode of Stonehenge, here is the stone circle. So we felt this is trying to tell us something because 
here you have one of the most ancient of all uh, geometric forms which deal with meeting places, with getting together with central, uh, with the, the centralization of, of uh, thinking. So we are, and Philippe is, I think, rather keen on this idea, we're going to look at what can we develop here in the way of astronomical uh, features. Uh, we're proposing to surround the circle with a, a circle of redwood trees uh, like this, and perhaps we can have uh, a redwood hinge rather than Stonehenge or something like that. But we'll, we'll look at that and maybe that becomes a very interesting uh, series of mathematical uh, diagrams which can be developed in the landscaping which will be of considerable interest, I would think, to the occupants of the building as well as to the, uh, neighbor, the uh, group of the community at large. So here then is the first stage site plan with the, this element developed uh, down to the end. This is the area where the second stage would be built. These are the tennis courts. The point of entry is here. And then a heavily screened landscaping will be put along the edge of the creek. And then this is the second, second stage with the three more of these identical elements going in uh, to complete the uh, 690,000 square feet of gross area. Now, Looking very quickly at the detail of the plans, here is again the point of entry, the wing off on this side, which is, now we're dealing with the entry level. This is uh, mostly workstation and some offices, mostly workstation and some offices. Again, I think the focus is, uh, is a little out. And down at, uh, thank you, down at this corner we have the health center we have the loading dock underneath, we've got the health center which include a, a gym, a, a, a basketball gym, a weightlifting area and aerobics, uh, dressing rooms and, a, um, and below that we have the cafeteria and a swimming pool and the tennis courts out in this direction. Now if I were entering here and looking at the, driving up and looking at the entrance, what I would see is this view. Here you see a sort of port cachere that you can drive under. The uh, entrance lobby is here, and beyond that you see right through the whole center of the campus down to the end of the site where there is this magnificent uh, grouping of redwood trees. Moving in farther into the lobby, here is the lobby in the foreground. You see out and see the beginning of the pond which flows off down into the circle, and these are the redwoods for the circle and beyond is the hill, which is really the focus of this axis. On either side are the offices, all looking into this wonderfully landscaped area. Going to the lower level, which is the parking level, as we see, it's on the same uh, level as the outside. Down at this end, we have the cafeteria, the dining facility, and uh, Philippe has some very interesting ideas of exactly how this will be uh, run in terms of non-institutional cafeteria and it will have an interior or an inside dining area and an outside dining terrace that's adjacent to the swimming pool although this is up at a slightly higher level and then the tennis courts are off to the southeast of that. Now if I was standing at this point looking back towards the building I would see in the foreground a pond or pool which is an extension of the waterworks coming out of the circle that we call the sort of magic circle coming down here and then I would see the outdoor dining and it would look something like this. Here's the water, the terrace, the outdoor dining, the cafeteria beyond, the two levels of the office or in fact in this case it is the gymnasium and the weight room and the terrace outside of those and then the R&D offices up above. And then going up to the second floor, the same kind of arrangement of offices uh, and workstations. And then going up to the top level and again addressing the question of the R&D offices. And here is the R&D office we've shown you in plan with the wraparound uh, shelf, uh, shelf or uh, book storage on the wall in front, the pin-up wall behind uh, the window. And of course, windows are marvelous when you can look out of them, but when the sun is shining, mostly what happens is people draw their Venetian blinds, and particularly when you have the dealing with the 
a screen or CRT, you tend to want to reduce the level of light. We were very anxious that these people should have the opportunity to be, to be able to see out without having to use the Venetian blind device and at the same time have a reduced level of light which would um, help the eye strain uh, problems which are always associated with this activity. And so we're proposing to put outside an awning which would be a perforated fabric awning that would allow you to see cloud formations through it but would substantially reduce the amount of light particularly reduce sky glare and reduce the sunlight coming inside and allow you to see out at the same time. So this device then we carry down to the next level. Here is the R&D office set back from the outside wall so that you can come out of your office. There's a rail there. You can see that. You can open your windows on these offices or in this case into a little courtyard. And we have, uh, we're developing a very nice arrangement of landscaping uh, a variety of different landscape devices that we can use in the courtyards with some trees, some uh, uh, wood uh, platforms, some little flowers or planted areas, some places to sit out, some tables, some areas to work outside if uh, they so wish. And then these are the two support levels of offices below. The awning outside that which sh shelters these uh, windows and then the lower level, which as you can see is partially submerged, which has the parking underneath. So that is the diagram for the building. It's uh, well inside the 58 foot height that we have a limitation on uh, according to our arrangement for the city. Now the upper plan then of the R&D offices, there are a series of uh, units like that that you go out of doors connecting. These units really work more or less vertically and we are planning uh, the, the, these uh, upper floors so that the people who support the, these R&D offices are directly below. We have stairs coming up in skylit areas so we're going to encourage uh, vertical communication by means of stairs. We have groups of stairs here which stick at the outside corner so that if for instance you're going to, from here you're going to the cafeteria you would come down in these stairs, which are glass enclosed stairs. You would walk through the landscaping and then go down to the cafeteria. If you're communicating across, you would similarly go down and run back up again. So that we will, uh, we will encourage movement, vertical movement by means of stairs. In fact, we're going to put in hydraulic elevators for two reasons. One is that they don't uh, come above the uh, roof of the building. The other is that they're slow and people will tend to run up and down stairs as, uh, as an alternative. So that's one of the important exercise features in a building like this. <laughs> now, looking at the top level, you can see the roof, you can see the gardens around which the R&D offices are arranged. You can communicate out of doors, and this particular climate allows us to do that uh, in, a, in a wonderful sort of way. And you can see the central feature in the surrounding parking. Now, if I were to look at one of these projecting corners, it would look something like this. Again, for uh, reasons of uh, the general economy of the building and the economics, uh, the, uh, the, the character of it, we are using an all glass facade down below with the fabric awning over it. Here is the upper floor. Uh, and then the parking is will be concealed. You won't be able to see the parking under the building because we'll either conceal it with landscaping or with some kind of a trellis uh, device. And then this is an in interior corner for the building. And again, you can see the character. If we're looking down the length of the building, you can see the awning going off in the distance and the trellis device that would shield us from the cars. And this is a view looking down which might be parallel let's say, to the road. Of course, we will, in fact, get more landscaping in near the house, but we couldn't show you what the building looked like if we put in all of the landscaping that we hope to, uh, to get in here. And there's another view of the same. So even though we have the parking around, we think we can do sufficiently uh, heavy landscaping so as to uh, reduce the impact of the parking on the office space inside and so that it will really appear to be in a the building will be settled into a park and here's the overall uh, plan of the building uh, there is a 
Again, the point of entry, as you look in, you will see this first uh, courtyard, the pool which runs in the stream down to the central waterworks, which comes down here and heads off <coughs> to the east. Meeting places, uh, strolling out places, places to get together, places to discuss, places for recreation, and of course, places for work. Now, looking at the building from this point, if we're, when we're in a helicopter, we're looking over the roof. You can see the little open courtyards around which the R&D officers are grouped. You can see the main axis, the wonderful view of the hills beyond the arrival point for the visitors. And then looking back in the opposite direction from the circle back towards the uh, entrance lobby and the hills that also are back up for that view. And then a slightly lower view from the same point. And an even yet lower view. And you can get a sense of the kind of uh, landscaping which really is possible in this uh, climate. And could be quite wonderful. Uh, it's uh, relatively easy to achieve and to maintain here and it seems that uh, it would be a to if we did achieve it it would be a real plus for the working environment of Borland and it would be a real contribution also I think to the whole neighborhood and to the community and then finally just an overall view of the building in place on the site again Route 17 and the residential community and again that will be heavily buffered by trees along in here the tennis courts we are looking at the possibility of having creating a kind of amphitheater an outdoor amphitheater which would be in a sense nothing more than a sloped uh, lawn area which would allow the entire population of the building to collect for various uh, kinds of functions could even be used for evening performances as well uh, if, if that uh, would, could ever develop. So it has many interesting, many interesting possibilities. So that's the whole proposal as it stands at the moment. Thank you. Yeah. Designed so that each unit, each one of these 180 by 130 foot units are independent and can move independently. We have uh, uh, a very interesting structural system which allows the, the buildings to be rigid, relatively rigid, but flexible enough so that everything doesn't, uh, not so flexible that everything falls off it, but uh, designed really for the, for the uh, everybody, you know, is very sensitive to that problem. We're using local engineers and uh, we're, I think we're very well covered on that. My only question concerning which doesn't require response is just that this beautiful waterway and its potential for drought conditions if we uh, have taken, you know, drilling wells or... Uh, well, there is, an, there is a, a, an interesting story to that. Maybe, Linda, if you, if you went into that one. Yeah, we have access to a reclaimed water line and it's coming off the Glenwood Estates golf course and I've already met with the water district and we're going to be able to use all reclaimed water on the site for landscaping and the waterscape. And this uh, reclaimed water is unusual in that it's one level below drinking level. Oftentimes, reclaimed water is salty or you can't use it for grass or it has an odor, but this is literally drinkable. So we've arranged for the water situation. With, with uh, fewer parking spaces at employees, does that assume uh, either public transportation or carpooling or uh, circling? We will certainly encourage uh, carpooling, but we are counting on what is a normal standard now of 3, 000, uh, three per thousand, three cars per thousand. But I, I think maybe again you ought to address that one from the first. Actually, the, the yeah. legal limit in Scotts Valley is four per thousand. We have an agreement with the city of Scotts Valley to park three per thousand, partly because we've held off enough parking area within the site to cover the rest. And part of our environmental impact report mitigation is that we must provide carpooling and, and public 
transportation. And without that, we can't get the project approved. So that will be a, a boil in the project to encourage public transportation and the carpooling. What is the current experience here in terms of cars per employees? It's, no. it's not quite one to one, but there's not a substantial amount of carpooling right now. There's been no specific program to encourage it on a regular basis. Uh, that will and must change uh, in the new campus. Do, do, does the, I'll call it non-standard work environment that a company like this has, does that, is that even workable in terms of carpooling? I mean, you know, people come and leave at different hours and times and we make strong demands on people in terms of of, the, of their productivity. Can, can we make that work? There's a large contingent of the working population that has much more standard hours, uh, such as customer service, tech support. There will be staggered work hours, which doesn't help during the peak. In the, when it really counts in the, in the warm months. I did not point out that there is a park course also on the site, which, will, uh, which would be laid out as a regular exercise, a park course. And, and, uh, we have the space to do that now. Good. Good. Thank you. So, when, 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 when do we run out of space? Yes. Oh, the big one is also in the Tokyo? Yes, it's the one opposite the palace, uh, the existing building, and we're building over behind it and over it. 20 story. 20 story. Yes. It's a big, big, big building yeah. yeah. for that size. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a very important uh, location. If you think of these awnings, so basically you can have two years ago. Two years ago. It's a, it's a cheap building because if you look at it, it the awnings make it, I mean, the whole thing, but it's, it's really glass and steel, so it's fast to build. And, uh, I mean, we're, we're working with it. Tell me, Hanji, your idea? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we had a circle. He started with a circle. I said, you know, let's do it interesting. So the R&D guys like the measures and that on June 21st, the sunset. And, you know, if we do that, then so, so uh, Kevin sent me a book and then he's making his calculations to orient this whole thing and different times of the years different things happen and this might be a giant solar clock and it's cheap to do and it's exciting. And it's also appropriate that today is the spring equinox. Mm -hmm. uh, today. Today, yes. Uh -huh. It's the 21st, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's being appropriately uh, the blessed. Yeah, <laughs> they actually, you see uh, your shadow. Over over. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, your finger didn't help. While we pass over, <laughs> you shattered my whole image. It's very good. Yeah, and where's so your office going to be for it? Here, I think. Is it right here right in there. the cafeteria? <laughs> <laughs> I can get the food. <laughs> it would be somewhere here. Well, there would be a dumb waiting that goes right straight down. So that, that yeah, would be in the corner somewhere. Legal is somewhere down over here. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, you're over here. <laughs> <laughs> the Baptist <laughs> Church. <laughs> the nice thing is we have Polo Ranch, the, the piece of land we were talking last oh, time, yeah. is here, and we basically have this, I don't know where we stand with this deal, and, uh, but we, it's, an escrow. it's an escrow. So we can expand with stuff here as we need, if we need to, if we needed to, exp you know, I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing. <coughs> Which is uh, west? West is in this direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, it's pretty well lined up the way it would sit. Right you can see there's it's the not freeway. Clear. It's not <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The sun is out there in the way. Right Whoa. It's it is interesting just to see the shadows <laughs> on it now with, <laughs> with, the actual, with the sunshine on it. It's, um, and this is the area that could be used for yeah, an yeah. amphitheater, yes. You can transplant large redwoods? Yes, in fact, there are a, a grouping of redwoods in here, which uh -huh. we're proposing to transplant. Is there a space where the whole company can meet, other than in, inside, or is it? No, we, have a, uh, we will have, have a, a, an auditorium, which I didn't point out, which is 250 people. Mm -hmm. But we do not have a, a space that we can get everybody in. Mm -hmm. It would be too large, and you wouldn't have enough use for it. Mm -hmm. 
Railroads are very shallow rooted, right? Yes, yes. Actually, we're contract yeah. growing. Yeah. Growing. Yeah. We're wow. contract growing now because we need so many big ones and we mm -hmm. want 20 feet or higher, so we're contract growing them, so by the time we get ready to plant them, we'll have It'll only take five, six hundred years for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. We just backdate the contract. We <laughs> <laughs> just backdate the We'll just, we'll just, we'll just take your car, go up to Wallala or somewhere up there. These are much less expensive. <laughs> Interestingly enough, in a nursery, redwoods grow four feet a year, is what Tommy mm -hmm. uh, told me last four night. Wow. Uh, in a nursery condition. Fast, fast growing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These redwoods don't uh, grow, they'll invest. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this is all being paid for by products which haven't even been written yet, right? Well, I hope they've been written. Uh, <laughs> we have to pay the bills, I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. So, so that's the Paradox River. That's Quattro Plaza. And around, where's Turbo Drive? And the gym will be called Reflex. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good, very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Sprint. Sprint, Sprint. Sprint. Circle. Track. <laughs> running. Track. Well, let's forget about that one. <laughs> it's a dog. That's running? The service entrance will be Lotus Way. <laughs> <laughs> the restaurant's Bull's Place. <laughs> well, we're going to be confused on where Windows is, though, right? <laughs> That's where they get broken up, the yeah. baby bills, you know? That's right, and we'll have the front gates. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a punishing experience. <laughs> yeah, the nice thing is that there, there, there are, yeah, I mean, you have some ideas if we need more space, mm -hmm. and the company grew a lot, mm -hmm. then given the land we have, we can continue, and, and well, we're not Alan, Alan told me that... that Based on current ratios, that, that this would probably serve us through about a billion dollars of sales. So we'll have to yeah. have our work cut out for us. If you just do revenue per employee type of math, that that would be phase two also. Right. Not phase yeah. one wouldn't go that yeah. far. Which which is you know how big is the a bigger one is it? Oh, it's huge. I mean, you will think you're in it. That's how those pictures were shot, you see? So you have to go with your camera at the bigger one, and then you can be in it. Yeah. See, I mean... 12 by 16. How, how big is it? 12 by 16 is the platform. Just the building. I, I have one more question on the fact where you said you have soft lands. If you go into further up the hill, which we're trying to acquire, does the soft land still continue up the hill, or does it stop? We don't have the subsurface conditions there, but generally on the hillside you, you should be... We actually have a tentative map uh, with us here today mm -hmm. to show areas that are buildable and areas that are not so buildable. Uh, some some this goes up, 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 it up. comes up in this, this direction. Uh, yes, it's sort of in this direction. You know, there's a lovely piece of meadow land there. I mean. yeah. mm -hmm. and it's that's a, it's a very beautiful piece of property, particularly down through here. Yeah. Have sense. you ever done a, um, a research type of... Uh, we designed, like well, we designed, uh, we are currently have under construction a, a, a facility for Merck, which is in fact a headquarters. In New Jersey? Yes, there are four, right. four headquarters, about a million, uh, two hundred thousand square feet. But we designed for IBM the Yorktown Laboratories, sure. the, and for AT&T the Bell Laboratories, the Bloomdale Laboratories, mm -hmm. and for IBM the ones in, in um, no, in, in uh, Hudson Hills which are just specifically computer related, which have not been constructed, but is I was... The, is the Yorktown research, is that circular that's from the, the air? It's a curve. Curve it's from curve, the yes, air, yeah. yeah. It's, just yeah. Uh, it's about 800,000 square feet. The one, the computer one we did was about 800,000 square feet also. So it's uh, that sort of experience. Have you done these awnings before? Yes, we did uh, on uh, for Conoco headquarters, mm -hmm. uh, the petroleum headquarters mm -hmm. in Houston. We did a similar kind of audio. It worked very well. It's been in place now for almost 10 years. And, and, uh, and you said corrosive the corrosive material. <laughs> what did you say the material was? Well, what we're planning to use is a flexible material, which will probably be either fiberglass, toughened coat of fiberglass, or a uh, toughened coat of nylon, something like that, which is woven, a woven material that you can see through, mm -hmm. uh, so that you don't have a complete block art right. at the same time. So was our environmental impact report, was that the problems mostly uh, traffic related? Who knows? I'm sorry. The, 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 
The environmental, the, the, IR? the environmental impact report isn't completed yet. Yeah. Yeah. We take this, this right. We don't, but we don't have snail doctors. So that's <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Hey, so how many meetings do you have today? I mean, how, how many well, presentations do I have?